Right. Well, welcome one and all. It's great to see so many friends, supporters, stakeholders, and uh, also colleagues from NRW. I'm David Henshaw, Chair of the Board at NRW. Um, this is a big day for us, um, launching our corporate plan, which is not usually one of the most exciting things to say. But it is exciting for us because of where we've been. It's fair to say we've had a few problems in recent years, and um, we've spent a bit of time like recovering from where we should have get to and be stable over the last couple, two or three years and we're in a far better place i remember vividly arriving as the new chair and being told nrw not really working that is not true now and that was despite the efforts of a huge bunch of very professional highly committed people in the organization we were letting them down but we're in a very different space now and having I mean, enabled the recovery which now stabilized and we've seized the moment to talk about breaking out from where we are into a very different form of approach to our task as an arm's length body for the Welsh Government. So today we want to launch the corporate plan, which is actually spelling out exactly how we're going to do that. Uh, and actually think very differently about how we should operate as a, a regulator. In fact, think seriously about becoming a 21st century regulator, intelligence-led, working with partners, working with stakeholders, working with the people we serve in a way perhaps we haven't done previously. So it's a very different approach, and that's why we're very proud to be here today. I'm very thankful to the Minister of Home for hosting the event. But to start with, we'd like to show you a video, which probably, I think, captures as much of what we're trying to do today. It is in Welsh, so please use your translation facilities. Thank you. Our hills and mountains. Our forests and woodlands, our seas, our urban green spaces, our wildlife, our people, our communities, our whales, our team. And Gwahaniaeth Together, Gwahaniaeth. making a difference. From our health and well-being, the food we eat, the prosperity of our nation. Nature is the foundation stone of Wales' well-being, which is why protecting and enhancing it is at the core of everything we do, and the stakes could not be higher. We are taking the lead in how Wales tackles the climate, nature and pollution emergencies it faces. Our vision is to see nature and people thriving together by 2050. And our mission is to see a Wales where nature is recovering. Communities are resilient to climate change and pollution is minimised. We're acting to build the resilience of Wales' ecosystem so that nature can adapt to a changing climate, like here in northwest Wales. Dredging works in the 1960s destroyed vital habitats, stopping the river connecting with the floodplain. But we're reversing that damage by adding hundreds of tons of boulders, gravel and sand back into the river. We've helped the habitats recover and biodiversity to thrive. Drainage ditches have been blocked to create pools, benefiting a whole range of wildlife and helping with carbon capture and storage. We're providing long-term sustainable benefits to the whole ecosystem. will help our communities to build resilience to climate change by working with nature to capture carbon and reduce flood risk. Peatlands are amazing at capturing and storing carbon. The way we value our peatlands has changed with time. Today we need them to be healthy. 
90% of Welsh peatlands are in a poor condition. And in poor condition, they admit greenhouse gases that contribute to climate change. Our work to restore peatlands across Wales, like here at Corscavilog National Nature Reserve in Gwynedd, is one of the most effective nature-based solutions to tackle both the climate and nature emergencies. We will strengthen our regulation work so pollution is minimised as much as possible, taking action where necessary. We're also tackling metal mine water pollution. We've identified, identified 129 old metal mines across Wales that are causing the greatest impact on our rivers. We have a programme to remediate them. Our work here at Fron Goch Mine in Ceredigion has reduced water pollution and has created new habitats for wildlife. We've reshaped and capped the waste dumps, allowing revegetation. We've diverted a stream to prevent it flowing into the mine. We've built channels to carry the clean surface water into a series of ponds, creating a wetland habitat. Our work here is really making a difference. As a zero carbon organization, we will lead by example, putting the natural environment at the heart of all of the decisions we make. We will make it easy to understand and to do things online and contact us if needed. We will lead the way. We will know how important it will be to collaborate with our partners. We will tailor how we work for the benefit of our communities and the people and the wildlife who call them home. In this next decisive decade, our plan is to take action to curb climate change, support nature's recovery and minimise pollution, making the best decisions for Wales' environment as we hold it in trust for generations to come. Okay, well, thanks very much indeed. That uh, I think hopefully captures what we are about. So without further ado, I'd like very much to welcome Judy James to talk to us as Minister of Climate. Thank you. Thank you very much. Really lovely to be here. Uh, this uh, I was about to say sunny lunchtime, but you know, what passes for sunny in Cardiff Bay lunchtime, um, just to launch the corporate plan. And I really do want to genuinely say that I have to read a lot of corporate plans and there have been a few over the last few months where it's actually been a pleasure to read them and this is one of them and I really want to encourage all of you out there who are working on a corporate plan to have a look at this one and uh, Banai Brecheniog um, because they are a whole new generation of that sort of corporate plan that uh, really uh, is a pleasure to read instead of a chore and um, really brings alive the mission and values of the organization um, that's, that's bringing that plan forward. So one of the real um, pleasures of reading the NRW corporate plan is looking to see how we can bring together people, the people of Wales and nature, the nature of Wales, in a, a harmony that's been lacking for quite some time now. And it puts me back in mind of the mission that we had at COP15, which was exactly that, to bring people back into harmony with nature. We talk about saving the planet, but we're not saving the planet. We're saving humankind and a planet that's fit for them. The planet will probably go on uh, without us. It's us we're saving, and I think it's an important distinction. And so what this plan does is it sets out a coherent vision and strategy for how we will get from where we are now to where we need to be. So Wales is signed up for the uh, COP15 Biodiversity 30 by 30 uh, process. We've got an awful lot of work to do together. We've got lots of partners in this room who will help us to get there. 
Um, the Welsh Government itself has got to get a bill through the Senate and we've got to get the proper organisational structures on the ground to get this to happen, to get our nature back to where we want it to be, to restore it to uh, its full glory, so that human beings can flourish and be the best people they can be in the way that we would like for all of the diverse communities of Wales. So there are lots of plans and statistics and emphasis on working together on our net zero plan and our biodiversity recovery plan, on our anti-pollution plan in particular, things around phosphates and um, water quality recovery, on how NRW will do its regulatory uh, functions and so on, but running as a golden thread through the whole thing is this theme of a Team Wales approach to bring the diverse communities of Wales back into harmony with our natural environments uh, that surrounds us and that we need. We absolutely need to have that thrive, uh, thriving life that we want for all our communities. So if you haven't read the plan, I highly recommend it. it I approached it with a heavy heart and found that I was happily turning its pages. It's not something I say lightly about a lot of the plans I have to read, um, but it's actually genuinely uh, an uplifting experience to read it. And I think will be an inspirational moment for the organization as it continues its journey of transformation into part of Team Wales and a very, very important part of Team Wales in our efforts to make sure that we continue to have a planet fit for our people and that Wales plays a global part in making sure that we have that planet that we play our role in. So I am absolutely delighted to be hosting this today, delighted to be launching it and looking very much forward to what everyone else has to say, not only today, but in going forward for the rest of uh, the rest of the time from now to 2030, in fact, as we as we get those biodiversity goals in place. So Diochaval, thank you very much for inviting me. I have to say, in my world, it's not often a minister says to you, I enjoyed reading your corporate plan. That was quite a seismic moment, which I shall never, ever forget, Julia. I have to tell you that. So without further ado, Derek Walker, the new Future Generations Commissioner. Thank you, Derek. Um, great to be here. Thank you for inviting me to say a few words. I was going to say exactly the same thing as the Minister in terms of um, opening remarks about the plan. It really is a refreshing read. And I would say this anyway, but when you see a plan that applies the Future Generations Act, that thinks broadly, that thinks about applying the five ways of working in putting that plan together and in communicating, you really do see a plan that pops, that lives that says things differently and uh, that engages with people. So very many congratulations on the plan. I, I too enjoyed reading it. Um, one of the quotes I use uh, regularly already in the job is one from a scientist, Johan Rockström, which says, we are the first generation to know we face unprecedented environmental risks, but we are the last generation with the significant ability to do something about it. And I think that's absolutely true. And um, the ambition, the actions, and the intention of this plan really um, set out a, an intention to do something significant in addressing climate and nature emergencies in Wales. But you will have seen today, we had um, a report, which I haven't read in full yet, from the China Climate Change Committee, which warns us in Wales not to be complacent and that we need to move further and faster in our action to address climate change. So um, it's great that we've got good plans and it's an important part of the process that we plan for what we're going to do, but it's the implementation and the delivery that matters and we need to focus on, on those outcomes. Um, I wanted to focus on three bits of the plan that I particularly uh, was interested in and um, thought was very strong. Um, and was new. And one of the areas that I thought was very interesting was uh, NRW's aspirations and intention to take more of an advocacy role in future. And the organization, in my view, is already looked to in terms of leadership on matters relating to nature and the climate and, and climate change. But they are really well pos positioned with credibility and expertise uh, to take on this role. And I very much welcome 
um, the fact that they're intending to do that. Those of us who come from the third sector uh, are used to shouting ourselves hoarse, trying to communicate and campaign for change. But having an organization within the tent of the public tech sector, supporting, calling out, advocating uh, for greater change is really very welcome. And I, um, and I congratulate you on taking up that um, position. The second point I wanted to welcome in the new corporate plan was the, uh, the way in which the green transition is considered and how it will have different and perhaps greater impacts on different parts of our society. And it does this by ensuring social justice is considered alongside environmental recovery, recognizing that these issues are indivisible. And this is the term um, we describe in the Wellbeing of Future Generations Act as being about integration. It's much easier to think about our own objectives, our own roles, um, their own purpose for our organizations. But when we apply the Wellbeing of Future Generations and think about integration and how our work can also affect other people's work and other people's priorities, you really do start to see a difference. And we know that those working in heavy industries, we know black, Asian and ethnic minority people will potentially be affected greater by climate change. For example, we know black, Asian and ethnic minority people are not represented well enough in the new green skills jobs that we um, we hope to see in the future. And if we don't address that now, we're just going to compound the inequality and disadvantage that we face in our society already. Don't groan, but the third point I uh, wanted to draw out was partnership working. I think, as has already been said, um, it's crucial if we're going to go uh, further and faster that we work together. And we have some fantastic collaborative arrangements in place um, through the public service boards and many, many other partnership and collaborative arrangements in place. Um, but I think my impression after three months in this role is we're not using these structures and these collaborative arrangements as effectively as we should be for this agenda. And we could be um, supporting and resourcing activity through the PSBs, not just to um, take forward their well-being objectives and their plans, but also to play a much greater leadership role on tackling climate change and the nature of emergency for their community, involving the third and the private sectors. We're not seeing enough engagement, I don't think, with the third and private sectors who play a hugely important role in these challenges. And I'm, I'm really pleased to see that that's been recognized in the NLW corporate plan. Um, forgive me, before I finish, I wanted to just um, flag uh, the work that I'm doing in my office to think about the Wellbeing of Future Generations Act and the, the work of the commissioner and our, my office um, over the next few years. I want my plan to be just as bold, just as ambitious, and just as focused on delivery as I think we're seeing with Natural Resources Wales. Um, we are proud to have this legislation. I think we're all proud to have this legislation in Wales. And it's, you know, one of the first things people speak to ministers about, I've heard, when they when they travel, um, they ask questions about the Wellbeing of Future Generations Act. And um, I, I had this this morning, meeting with the government of Flanders, um, which I mistakenly mentioned the Netherlands rather than Belgium. Um, uh, and they were very interested in thinking about how they could apply this uh, within Flanders in Belgium. But we've seen green shoots of change, we're seeing some radical transformation, but again, we need to not um, be complacent. Um, we need to see real change for people right across Wales as a result of the legislation. We, it's great to be proud of the legislation. I think it is the right legislation, but we need to put much bigger focus on the implementation and delivery uh, to make a difference for uh, everyone's lives. The biggest pushback I've had in the role so far, and I guess it's inevitable from public bodies, is, you know, this is great, but we can't do this now with all the other challenges that we're facing in terms of demands on services, demands on resources. Um, this will be familiar to many of you, but of course we can't wait. So it will be my job and those of others to work alongside the public bodies that fall within the Act to make sure that we support them to act now for tomorrow in the current circumstances uh, without delay. So 
I would encourage you um, and use this opportunity to encourage you to um, involve yourself in the planning work that we're doing at the Wellbeing and Future Generation Commission, Commissioner's Office to think about what we focus on. I want to put a greater focus on the how and on the implementation and perhaps to focus on fewer things and in more depth over the long term. So we really value your input to that um, consultation process. So thank you very much. Thank you once again to, to, to NRW on, on a fantastic and ambitious um, programme of work and proposal. We enjoy an excellent relationship with your organisation and work closely alongside you on all sorts of areas and certainly on the PSBs. And I look forward to strengthening that relationship and supporting you around the implementation in the years to come. Thank you. Thanks very much, Derek, and uh, just echo the close collaborative work that's going on. Without further ado, Claire Pillman, Chief Executive of NRW. Well, the old... Thank you very much. Both Derek and Julie, um, thank you very much for those very kind words. And uh, I think, you know, it is always when you look at things through other people's eyes that, that actually they become real to you. Um, Fran and Dad Pal, lovely to see you all uh, here. It, it feels like a, a sort of big day for us, which is which is great. Um, I'm going to start off speaking in Welsh. I'm a Welsh learner, and uh, that's quite daunting for me. Um, so be with me on that journey. Um, but it's important, not just for that, but one of the reasons I think this plan sort of sings off the page a bit is because we didn't write it in English and translate it into Welsh. We started in both languages and used the language to open up issues for discussion and debate. And that sort of, you know, how does this work in Welsh? Would you say it differently in Welsh? Would it mean something different? So the language is important in the way that this plan has been produced. So um, bear with me for a few few paragraphs. You don't need me to tell you that we're facing the most pivotal, precarious moments in generations. Climate change and pollution are driving nature in Wales towards collapse. Extreme weather is on the increase, and nowadays the demand for their natural resources that support every aspect of our lives is now outstripping our planet's ability to renew them and sustain. There is no doubt now about the facts and the evidence that have been outlined in recent climate and nature reports. Indeed, recently, scientists came to the conclusion that the global temperature increase will be more than 1.5 degrees centigrade above pre-industrial levels for at least one year between 2023 and 2027. This will exceed a threshold, albeit temporarily, beyond which the scale of climate impacts is recognised as being far greater. Our planet is sending a distress signal in no uncertain terms, and without concerted and urgent action, it will be too late. The next decade. Sorry, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> the next decade will be our final chance to avert a climate catastrophe, turn the tide on pollution and reverse biodiversity loss. And it is these three pillars that underpin our new corporate plan, nature and people thriving together. 
the blueprint that sets out how we at NRW can make a difference to tackle these three emergencies. Named after the vision that will inspire us, we have set ourselves three wellbeing objectives that will help steer us on the journey to ensure that Wales steps up to meet the 2030 targets for nature and climate, and how we will use this decisive decade as a springboard towards achieving wider international targets, goals and milestones in 2050. So by 2030 in Wales, we should see nature recovering, communities that are resilient to climate change and pollution minimised. As you saw in the video, threaded in each part of this plan is our focus on people, because as Julie says, this is about people. And part of that people thing is our colleagues across NRW who live our values of being connected, bold, caring, and resourceful. And their relationship with the people we are all doing this for, the people of Wales. And I am unapologetic that the plan is bold in terms of its ambition. We outline the steps we will need to take to support nature's recovery and how NRW will prioritise action so that by 2030, nature's recovery will be secure by sharing our own knowledge and expertise and drawing upon the insights and expertise of our partners. The plan sets out how we will support action to reduce greenhouse gas emissions and contribute to the Welsh Government's ambition for a net zero Wales by 2050. It also outlines how we will accelerate action to adapt to and mitigate the risks posed by a warming planet on communities and wildlife. We will prioritise our actions to ensure nature and people will be protected from the impacts of pollution by cleaning up our rivers and seas, regulating business robustly and minimising waste. As a landowner, operator and zero carbon organisation, we know that we must set an example to others, meeting the highest standards in how we work. And sometimes we know that that will be difficult. Our plan also sets out a step change in how we will stimulate progress on the policy shifts needed to tackle the nature and climate emergencies. And where progress on these objectives is slowed or hampered by circumstances outside our control, we will use our voice to call for change. And thank you, Derek, for, for endorsing that that step into that advocacy role. Our plan also demonstrates how we are going to sharpen our focus on social and environmental justice, making sure that we deliver for all communities across Wales. At this time of growing inequality and the cost of living crisis, this can all feel quite daunting which is why we must be upfront about what is needed. It requires a movement, and that movement is in this room. Working together, we can quite literally move mountains, but none of us can do it alone. Our plan sets out where NRW can uniquely contribute to moving these mountains, but we will need to adapt how we work and work alongside Welsh Government and with you, our partners in the public, private and voluntary sector, to bring about a change that is fair and just and ensures that nobody gets left behind. I believe that between us, we have the tools, the knowledge and the passion to find solutions, but we do have to pick up the pace. If we needed it, Today's Climate Change's Change Committee's report is a timely reminder of the scale of the challenge facing us. Because this isn't a time to sit on the sidelines. It's a time for resolve, innovation, determination, and as the Minister has said, 
a real Team Wales approach in how we respond, how we adapt, and how we mitigate the greatest challenges of our time. Because we are increasingly at risk of crossing tipping points that result in large scale, dramatic ecosystems changes. Sometimes in the press, those are, they feel quite distant. They're other people's coral reefs, but they're not distant. They're here in Wales, where we are losing species up in, in the uplands because of climate change. And we are losing coastal habitat, such as salt marsh, due to sea level rise driven by erosion. Given that one in eight properties in Wales are considered at risk of flooding from rivers, the sea and surface water, not to mention the projected increases in the intensity of rainfall events due to climate change, it is essential that we work collaboratively to ensure that communities are much more resilient to climate change by applying a suite of adaptation actions at landscape, streetscape, and individual building scale. Recognizing the increased risks from heat waves. The weather's been lovely recently, but you know we all know that last year we hit levels that we had never hit before in Wales. Those 40 degree temperatures could be occurring roughly every three years by the end of this century. And the need to adapt to our towns and cities will become more and more important if they are to be livable for our fellow citizens. While climate change is damaging nature, it is also clear that creating and restoring biodiverse habitats that lock up carbon is a key part of the solution. And we saw in the video some of the work that we're doing in our peatlands. And it's estimated that nature-based solutions can mitigate around 20% of current global carbon emissions. So the work that we're doing with Welsh Government support in our peatlands, but also planting new woodland. I was with the First Minister, um, near Llandovery, uh, last week, planting trees in a new woodland there. And all that restoration and creation of sustainable habitats brings together both biodiversity gain and carbon value, and it will create a more carbon, a more climate resilient Wales. And going back to the people, we're certainly really beginning to understand much more about what the people of Wales want for the future of nature and us. We have been involved in a national conversation with people across Wales for the last year, looking at that, what do they want in terms of a vision for 2050? And that will provide the longer term focus to the work we, and I hope others do, because it is a positive vision where nature and people do thrive together. Throughout this process, which is called Nati Rani, we have been inspired by the stories people have told us and the values that they share, not just around the value of nature, but around social justice, equality of access, fair land use, and accountability for our actions. People recognize the need for transformational change if we are meet to meet that ambition, and they want to play their part to support that. We must all find the opportunities to enable citizens to be an active part of that change. Nati Rani is a truly inspiring piece of work and the result of that exercise, sort of powered by the people of Wales, will be released in the summer at the Royal Welsh Show. And I know, Julie, you're, you're coming along for that. And we will work with everyone in this room to develop a collective response to that vision in the autumn. So to conclude, we know there can be no more half measures. Beyond 2030, society will face even tougher choices on how Wales can reach the 2050 commitments for nature and climate. But our plan starts, sets out how we are starting to work 
on those issues already, identifying, testing, innovating, and making the case for change to set us on the right pathway to that place where nature and people truly thrive together. So let's show to the world that Wales might be a small country, but our ambitions for this and future generations are great. Quite simply, a world where nature and people thrive together. Bidle my natia a fogel and funny gida en gilid. Diochen vayan. Well, thank you very much indeed, Claire. And as she said, that lays out the, the approach. And we're very, very proud to have got through the process of doing it and also get the landing we have had with it. So watch this space. Thank you so much for being here today. We really appreciated it. Please join us for some locally sourced refreshments upstairs. And we look forward to talking to you. Uh, teas, coffees, and refreshments. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs>